Today, Carnival Cruise Line has made a really big announcement. I'm actually excited about it because what they are doing, I think, is going to even further the change a little bit that we are seeing in the cruise industry today. We're also going to talk about uh, some cruise passengers who sailed on Norwegian that didn't have everything quite go smoothly. I think that there are a lot of things that we can learn from that situation and be more well prepared the next time we go. A lot of people say they don't want to have quite as many children on some of the cruises that they go on. So I I've got tips for you about that. And then um, finally, we are going to talk for a minute about what Holland America is doing. Holland America has made an announcement with an event that they are going to have on one of their amazing legendary voyages, and it's going to trickle down to their other ships to an extent, and I want everyone to make sure that they don't miss it. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Tuesday, it is July 23rd of 2024, and I wanna start off thanking everyone for coming last night. We had a really fun live last night. So if you missed it and you haven't had the chance to watch it yet, go back and watch it. You'll really enjoy it. Now, I want to start at the top today talking about uh, Carnival Cruise Line because they have made a really big announcement today. So already in the year 2024, this year, they have announced two new cruise ships, that they're having two new cruise ships built. Well, today they are making the announcement that they are ordering three more cruise ships. So let me tell you about it. So first of all, the two cruise ships that they have already ordered and announced this year uh, are Excel class cruise ships. They are like the Mardi Gras, the Celebration, the Jubilee, and um, is there one other one? I can't remember. But anyway, it is the same size of those ships. Last November, I had the pleasure of going on the Celebration, and it's a beautiful ship beautiful ship and I would say I really like the way it is laid out. I think that um, I I like traditional princess ships the best uh, but right behind it would be how they did the celebration. I think they thought of a lot of things with the celebration that they should have thought of when they were doing the Sun Princess. Love princess but there are some really cool uh, features there on the celebration really considering how many guests they've got on board. So anyway they just announced today that they are introducing three new ships and they're in a whole new class. And you know what? Some people like smaller ships, people like medium ships, people like the really big ships. I tend to like them all because for me, I can think of things that I enjoy about all of them. So let me tell you. So first of all, with the ships that they um, have announced so far, it is going the first two they are going to get in 2027 and 2028. That is for the new XL class ships that they're getting. But for the ones that they are announcing today, the Carnival will also be getting ships in 2029, 20, 2031, and 2033. Their new ships are going to all be built there in Italy at the Fincantieri shipyard. And those three new ships that they just announced today are going to be the largest ships ever built there in Fincantieri shipyard. Of course, they're going to be the LNG, the liquefied natural gas ships, and they are going to hold when they are going at full capacity up to eight, close to, it says, 8,000 guests. I haven't been able to find a name of that new class of ship that they are going to be doing and all of the details that go with it, so I think those are forthcoming. But I just wanted to let you know that something fun is on the radar there at Carnival. Carnival, um, as they were talking about it in the press release, is known as America's Cruise Line. And I can see that to a large degree. And um, it really, I believe, with Carnival depends on what cruise experience that you're looking for, the length of cruise you choose, the ship you choose. And there's a whole lot that goes into that um, in order to be able to go and get the experience that you're looking for. But based on my experience on the celebration level, Last November, I could go on Carnival again on a ship similar to that and, and really enjoy myself. It turned out really nice. Um, so I was really pleased, actually. And um, it, it really, truly had something from everyone, for, from children, clear to, you know, from people 8 to 80, 8 months to 80, I don't know. But there is really, they really cover um, all of the ages really well. So there was a lot there, a lot of different venues to suit a lot of different tastes. Okay, so on to Holland America. Uh, well, and also... 
Carnival says they're going to have some new attractions on board. So that's going to be fun to see. Um, we've not seen Carnival have any glitches with any of their new features, um, like we're just seeing on the Sun Princess. So I'm really excited. I think it's going to be great to see. Now, Holland America. So Holland America has a fresh fish ambassador. His name is Chef Morimoto. And in September of this year, they are doing a legendary voyage in Japan. Um, it's called the Majestic Japan Cruise. And so for a few days of that, he is actually going to join some guests on board. During the time that he is on board, they are going to have what they call coffee chats where people can come and listen to what he's got to say and I guess have a cup of coffee, maybe have a chance to say hello to him. And uh, so that's from September 24th through September 30th this year, of course. And also while he is on board the ship, they are going to be doing some pop-up uh, dinners that you'll have to pay extra for, of course, in the Pinnacle Grill where he will um, cook, you know, the... I think he's going to, from what I guess, sounds like he's going to help prepare the meals as well as, of course, be recipes that he has put together. And as guests attend those functions, it looks like they're going to have a little bit more access to him to ask their questions, say hello, whatever. Now, so that will be on that legendary voyage. And I'm going to tell you about the different um, segments of that voyage that you can book if you want to be on board while he is on board. At the same time, um, they have got the Morimoto by Sea, which is a venue on the New Amsterdam. That's a separate restaurant there where guests can dine. But in association, like conjunction with what they are doing with him joining guests on board, that majestic sailing, they are going to have pop-up um, restaurants on board their other Holland America ships. So it'll be really fun to hear from those of you that have a cruise book during that time and they have those pop-ups that you can go um, enjoy that cuisine as well. Holland America really does try very hard to to do a lot of fresh fish. They try to source the fish that they serve locally. I know it's a really big deal on their Alaskan cruises that they get their fish locally up there in Alaska. So um, this is really exciting. I think it, it adds something extra fun on a cruise. And so they've got like three different segments of the Legendary Voyage. So if you're not busy this September and you want to take a look, they've got the 53 day, which is the full trip and it's a round trip Seattle which is just perfect for people that don't like to fly long distances. And then they've got a 51-day cruise that sails from Vancouver to Seattle. And then finally, a 34-day cruise that is going to go from the port there in Yokohama, which is the one in Tokyo, back to Seattle. And so that's 34 days. I think I said that maybe. And then if you want to go on a little bit of that cruise, but um, you don't mind if you're not on board when the Chef Miyamoto is on board, they've got a fourth segment that is only 19 days and that goes from Seattle just to Yokohama and it's September 1st through the 21st. So I hope you find that helpful if that's something that you would really enjoy. They're going to a lot of ports there in Japan. They've got an overnight in Tokyo and an overnight in Honolulu. So I know that um, it covers a lot of ground there in Japan as well as between here and there. So it's really exciting. Now, next. Okay, so it keeps coming up in the news, and I forgot to say this in my intro. It keeps coming up in the news about how there are certain places that are trying to curb tourism. And uh, Venice is one of those places. So in Venice this year, for 29 days that were their super busy days, they actually had a fee that they charged tourists to come into Venice. My understanding is that they charged it at one of the train stations as you were heading into Venice. Uh, five euro is how much they charged per person. Now, if you're under the age of 14, if you're a hotel guest, and if you're a local, of course, you don't have to pay up, but those people were exempted from that. So for 29 days, they charged that fee of five euros for guests coming in, people that wanted to see Venice. They earned $2 million dollars and they have said that they are thinking of changing it to 10 euros per guest next year and charging um, that even on more days. So to me, it's a really interesting way to look at it, and I am sure they are searching for when the fee that they charge becomes a barrier to entry, when people will look at that fee and say, you know what, we're only going to go into Venice once, we're going to really see everything we want to see on that day, but we're not going to go in for two or three days, or people will say, you know what, I don't need to go. I'll just um, sightsee somewhere else and see what I can see without going into Venice. And uh, so I, I was wondering about this. I've thought about this and I've thought about, you know, people in Barcelona are so upset. Uh, they love to lump cruise passengers in with this. So I was thinking, you know what? 
maybe one of the things they could look at is charging a fee because I know that there are people, if they're on the ship there in Barcelona and there's a fee to go into Barcelona, they're not going to go. Um, and then you have people that would pay quite a fee in order to be able to go into Barcelona. Sometimes it's people that have been there before and they're like, I don't need to go again. Sometimes people are like, there's nothing on my list I want to see there. I'm one of those people. I would pay it and get off because I'm there. Um, I really enjoy Barcelona. And so you have to um, really think about what all of these places Places are doing, but I like it from the standpoint that it helps them earn money to take care of where they are going, and hopefully it will help weed out some of the people that don't really care if they go or not. The you know the people that were just going to go along to go with the group, or they were just it's on the list of places, so let's go. But they don't really care, so maybe this will make it so they don't want to go. Tell me what you think about all of this, would you? Um, I think it's a really interesting approach but it sounds like maybe it's working. Except for this year, um, I should add, in Venice, they didn't think it made a difference. And truly, five euro is not very much. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how much they have to charge in order to curb tourism a little bit. And so tell me in the comments, would that make you want to go? Uh, would it make you a little bit like, okay, I'll just pay and go? Or would you be like, no, I'm not going. So tell me what you think, okay? Now, uh, next, we talk uh, about going on cruises, and I try to give you good tips about this. And with the announcement that Princess made that that Park 19 is not going to come to fruition, at least in the way that they announced it was going to be, we have not heard what they're going to do instead. And I think that's really important to note. They've just decided that what they had, that they, what they were going to do, they're not going to do that anymore. And so um, it's quite the discussion. If you read the comments and you look on some of the other peoples that have talked about it, like on the Facebook groups, all of these things, there's really quite a discussion about people like really happy because they don't want children on the cruises that they're going on. And people are like really sad because they booked the cruise in order to experience those things both no matter how old they personally are, but also for people that booked it for their children to enjoy that as well. And having thought about that, um, I want to tell you a few things. If you are someone, some people are passionate about not wanting children on the cruises that they're on, you should be aware that on Virgin Voyages and on Viking, children don't go, uh, no one under 18. So you don't have to worry that there are going to be any children on those voyages. I think that's really important. I understand completely that those cruise lines don't sell all of the places that maybe Princess does or Celebrity, Royal Caribbean, the other cruise lines. But at the same time, I just thought I would point out a few things so that you keep them in mind. Uh, one thing is definitely look at the time of year that you're going to travel. Don't go, if you don't want a lot of children, don't go in the summer when children are out of school. Don't go at Christmas time, like during the holidays, your Thanksgiving and your Christmas, because a lot of people, or you know, other holidays there around Christmas time, because a lot of people sail together, whether it's Hanukkah or whether it's Christmas. People have time off of work. They love to celebrate as a family, so off they go. Um, in addition to that, um, don't go over spring break, and it seems like that spring break window. I heard from people this year from really kind of you know a little bit mid to late February, clear till mid April that there were a lot of children because because it depends on where you are in the country when they run those spring breaks, a lot of children. So book your cruises so that you are not sailing in those windows of time. And like with us going to the Mediterranean this year in October, there will be, I'm expecting that there will be some children, but there will be way fewer children on that cruise in October than there would be in the height of the summertime. I've been in the height of the summertime. I've been on a, a Mediterranean cruise in May and June and July and um, haven't done August, I don't think, in September. And it is much, a lot more children during those months that school is on the break. So I hope that helps you. It also really helps to look at the um, cruise ship that you're cruising on. Some cruise lines automatically have fewer children than other ones. And, um, but yeah, just a lot to think about. And so just have that as your heads up if you really don't like children to be on the ship with you. We've got um, one of our Let's Go family members. If you haven't Join our Facebook group, even if you don't do Facebook for anything else. We've got a Let's Go family member on the Enchanted this week. He's graciously putting up a lot of photos. There are a lot of children sailing this week. Um, to me, I think there's a lot of fun that goes with that. Um, 
there's a lot of fun that goes with it. But I also sometimes choose cruises that there won't be as many children. So you just have to choose what works for you. Now, um, along with that, I think you should know Virgin Voyages currently has kind of what I call an interesting promo going. So if you book a cruise um, from July 23rd through August 23rd, um, and you are an adult, clearly you're a parent or, an, or a, someone's guardian, legal guardian, you can bring your child with you aged 18 to 26. Um, I like they call it the um, kids for the, for kids, but it's really if your child is between the ages of 18 and 26, they can sell for free with you in the cabin. But it's only when there's two people in the cabin. So if you get so that you've got the third and fourth guests, they're going to pay just as much to come too. So heads up about that. But if you um, were wanting to bring uh, your adult child with you somewhere and you were going to go by yourself and you want to bring them, this is a good time to book it. And you have to call into Virgin Voyages to get that promo. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, today has finally come. This is the day that you need to click subscribe, be part of the magic around here. And uh, if you appreciate my updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? Thank you so very much. Now, um, finally, uh, let's talk about that family. I think you've probably seen them in the news or heard about them, but there was a family having a wonderful family cruise on Norwegian. They got up to catch a can. They booked their cruise, the, sorry, their um, excursion with the cruise ship, and off they went to see um, that lumberjack show. And when it came time to go back to the ship, they run a shuttle now. Um, you should be aware there that in Ketchikan, uh, if, right in this town area there, right where everything is located, that's where your Princess and your Holland America Park. That to me is one of the reasons it's good to go on Princess and Holland America because they're always very conveniently located up there. But um, Norwegian is actually contracted a few years ago, it was for 20 years, for this um, port area that is further down. It's really too far to consider to walk, so you just take the shuttle that they have and uh, you go between you know the town area and out to where the cruise ship docks. Well, um, so it's time to go back and they weren't to get on the shuttle. There were too many people to get on the shuttle. Shuttle operator says, wait for the next one. They said, okay. So they stood there for quite some time waiting for the next shuttle to come and the next shuttle never came. So after a long time, they wait, They um, decided to call, they figured out to call the port agent. They called and got another um, van coming, picked him up, took him down to where the ship had been docked, but the ship had already sailed. And um, with already sailing, they were the ship. Um, they had left behind the passports for everyone except for one of the guests. And I don't know if any of you know. Um, I don't know how in depth they search a cabin for people's passports. I could see them going in and like opening the safe to get out people's passports, but I can't imagine them rifling through people's belongings to find their passport. So um, anyway, the family then was left there, and they could not join the ship at the next port because they didn't have every everyone's passports and it was a Canadian port and so they ended up just having um, you know to arrange flights and get home well um, Norwegian helped them arrange the flights and they traveled home and then um, I guess some of their family members were still on board the ship and so why am I telling you about this because well I feel bad for the family but to me um, I always look at all of these situations including situations in my life I look and think oh how could I do things differently what do I learn so that I go forward a little bit, um, you know, more well educated about everything? And so, a few things that I would think about is make sure that when you are counting on um, a shuttle taking you back somewhere, if they're not showing up well in time for you to be there in time for all aboard, start calling around then. Forever, I have shown you that when we disembark a ship, I always take a picture of the phone number for the port agent so that I've got it with us. Even if I'm going on an excursion with the ship, um, I always take take a picture of that so if something unexpected happens I've got it because those are not always easy to find so make sure that you've got that phone number make sure you pay a lot of attention to the time I know that like if you are going to go somewhere they always say you know the last shuttle leaves at this time or the last tender leaves at this time so don't be <laughs> don't be the last one there don't wait and say well if I'm there by 4 30 it says the last tender goes at 4 30 or the last shuttle goes at 4 30 if I'm there by 4 30 I'm good 
I always work in some extra time. Um, so try to do that because that gives you a wiggle room in case um, something unexpected happens, like the shuttle doesn't come back, so that you're starting early in order to get the help that you need. And I know that I'm sure they were standing there thinking, they said they would come back, we just need to be patient. And so I completely get that. Um, I think that one of the things that stands out to me the most is in reading the news story about this, um, is how concerned they were about how much everything cost. And so it turns out that Norwegian is doing their best to make everything right for the people. They are paying them for the fee that you get charged when you don't visit a foreign port on a cruise and you've left. They are reimbursing them for that because that's an automatic charge. That's not something that Norwegian has control over. So they are refunding them that. They are giving them money back for the number of days that they missed for their cruise. And they're giving them a discount. I believe it's 20% on a future cruise. So I believe that Norwegian is doing all they can do about this. But you know what? Have travel insurance so that if you get stuck somewhere and your flights cost a whole lot more to get home than you anticipated, you've got help with that. Um, to me, an in insurance is for when something unexpected happens. And if you can't self-insure yourself on that, make sure that you have insurance to cover those kind of things. Because if we always knew what was going to go wrong, we would change whatever it was so that it didn't happen and we would never have to worry about it. But um, the bottom line is there's a lot of uncertainty in life. Life. And so insurance helps um, protect against that a little bit. And the insurance helps, you know, mitigate some of the consequences. We can, you know, we get to choose our choices, but we don't get to choose the consequences. And so thought I would just put that out there. And I hope this helps some of you. If any of you think of anything else that we should think about this, I know some people would say, well, always take your passport with you when you get off the ship. And then there are people that would say, don't take your passport with you because there's a chance you might lose it. Um, a chance, you know, if you're your purse got stolen, your bag got stolen, someone pickpocketed you, you could lose your passport that way. So a vote in the comments what you think about taking your passport with you off the ship as well as anything else you think we could um, learn from this. Now, in addition to inviting you to watch our live that we had last night, I just wanted to tell you that um, we talked a lot about our love boat cruise. We talked about our group cruise uh, to Alaska that is we're going to be leaving Friday to get on the ship on Saturday for. And I just wanted to let you know that we are really, really excited. Uh, Gordon and I are trying to think outside of the box with some different things to do. I know that a lot of us are used to going on group cruises, so you eat with the people, you maybe meet them. Uh, but we are trying to think of some other ways to make things extra special. So stay tuned and we'll share them with you as we go. Uh, we did have something unexpected happen with our Rego Princess cruise. We found out about it since we've been home. So I'll tell you about it tomorrow. But I uh, just thought, yeah, give you something fun to look forward to. So I'll see you all here again tomorrow. And I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.